Chapter 5, Topic 5.2, The General Structure of Viruses. We're going to be covering the size range that viruses fall into, viral components such as capsids, spikes, nucleic acids, and envelopes. We're going to talk about in detail about the nucleic acids of viruses, and we're going to talk about substances in the virus particle other than the ones that we've pre previously mentioned. At the end of this recorded lecture, you should be able to discuss the size of viruses relative to other microorganisms, describe the function and structure or structures of viral capsids, distinguish between enveloped and naked viruses, explain the importance of viral surface proteins or spikes, diagram the possible configurations that nucleic acids may possess. Viruses are very small. Most of them are smaller than cells, although there are a few exceptions where very large viruses are larger than very small bacteria. But in general, they follow this scheme. If this is the size of a eukaryotic cell, and this is the size of a prokaryotic cell, this is the size of the largest viruses. Very, very small. Generally speaking, cells, such as this eukaryotic cell or this prokaryotic cell, are measured in micrometers, or a millionth of a meter, and viruses are measured in nanometers, or billionths of a meter. Being non-cellular, viruses don't have structures such as cell membranes and cell walls and such. All viruses do have a capsid or protein shell that protects their genetic material when they are outside of the cell. In the diagram, here's the capsid on that one, here's the capsid on that one. All viruses have some sort of macromolecule that grabs a hold of host cells. The book calls them spikes, and we'll stick to that. So there's a spike there, there are spikes on this one. The spikes are composed of either protein or glycoproteins, proteins with sugar units. The spikes can either pro protrude from the surface of the capsid, such as in this diagram, or they can be embedded in the envelope, which we will be discussing shortly. Unlike cells, virus genomes can be composed of either DNA or RNA. They are not composed of both DNA and RNA. This is so unusual, we classify viruses based on if they are using DNA or RNA for their genetic material. Some viruses have an envelope or a lipid bilayer surrounding them that they have stolen from the host cells as they are leaving. Viruses are also classified by whether they have an envelope, which makes them an enveloped virus, or if they do not have an envelope, a naked or non-enveloped virus. Don't you love it when the terms are self-explanatory? Now that we have covered the basic structure of a virus, let's go back to the nucleic acids. Viruses can have several different configurations of their DNA or RNA genomes. Some viruses have a double-stranded DNA genome. This is most similar to cellular genetic makeup. For example, your cells have double-stranded DNA for your genes. Some viruses have single-stranded DNA genomes. This configuration is never seen in cells. Well, enough about the DNA viruses, although some of them are my favorites. Let's go on to the RNA viruses. Some viruses have a single-stranded genome of positive polarity. What exactly does that mean? It means that the genome can act like an mRNA once it is in the host cell. A ribosome can clamp down on the RNA genome and start making virus proteins immediately. Other viruses have a negative polarity single-stranded RNA genome. That means that an RNA copy of the genome must be made before the ribosomes can clamp on and start making viral proteins. Some viruses have a double-stranded RNA genome. It acts like double-stranded DNA, in that mRNA copies are made from it, and the copies go off to the ribosomes. Then there are the retroviruses. They have an RNA genome that is converted into a double-stranded DNA copy. The DNA copy is inserted into the host cell's DNA. From there, mRNAs are made from the virus DNA, which code for viral proteins. We'll be talking about retroviruses some more as we go through this chapter. Now, there are other substances in the virus particle other than capsids and nucleic acids and such, and it varies from virus to virus. Viruses that have genomes that are never seen in cells often carry their own enzymes with them in the capsid. The most famous and useful of these virus enzymes is reverse transcriptase. 
which makes a DNA copy from an RNA genome of a retrovirus. Cells never do that, so retroviruses have to supply their own reverse transcriptase. Viruses with a negative polarity single-stranded RNA genome have to bring their own enzymes to make RNA copies of the RNA genome, which also never happens in cells. Some viruses take away parts of their host cells. Arena viruses are full of host ribosomes. They appear like a sandy arena under an electron microscope, hence the name. Retroviruses bring along host tRNAs. Well, that's it for this topic. You should now be able to discuss the size of viruses relative to other microorganisms, describe the function and structures of viral capsids, distinguish between enveloped and naked viruses, explain the importance of viral surface proteins or spikes, diagram the possible configurations that nucleic acids may possess.